Hi guys, welcome back to another Fast Panda Gaming Lockdown Transmission. Um, we still can't get together to game, so you're going to have to put up with myself, The Claw, and we've got Lawrence joining us again, waffling for a bit. As you can tell, it's Christmas. The Claw told me I had to look Christmassy, so this is what you've got. Um, we're going to be talking about 2020. Now, it hasn't been a great year, so we're going to be talking about three models that we all love from 2020 and our three favourite rules changes or other things that Corvus Belli have done. So there's going to be no negativity, it's going to be all positive stuff. If any of us are negative, then in the edit we're going to be replaced by the Grinch, like this. So it's going to be all good stuff. Um, we apologise it's not another battle report, but we can't get together to game. Bear with us, we are going to try and film a battle report during Christmas when the restrictions are slightly eased. So thank you for bearing with us. Hopefully you enjoy this lockdown transmission. If you do, give us a like, give us a subscribe. And uh, if we forget to say so at the end, have a great Christmas. And let's get to the conversation. Okay, thanks for that storm shout. Let's get straight into it with our uh, choices. So who's going to go first? I like your idea of a face-to-face-to-face-to-face-to-face-to-face roll. Okay, then. Um... My whip's going to be 12, because I'm, I'm really intelligent. As, because as it's like playing with a 12 year old. That makes perfect sense. <laughs> I, I'm going to go for 13, as I've just hit teenage years. But... <laughs> I'm going to go for 13 as well, because I've got a whole bunch of more out on my painting desk. All right. Okay. All right, so who's, who's going to win? Okay, I got a 7. Um, I got an 18. I failed on a 19 as well. So. All right, so... Uh, the 12 year old goes first. Uh, yay. Okay, so let's start with uh let's start with rules. Yeah. Okay, okay. You should be seeing my screen. Mm-hmm. We are. Oh, we can see your browsing history, is that correct? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Third favorite rule is the gizmo kit. And um this got brought in in, uh, in four. Um, basically, it's the kind of like medikit for um, remotes. Yeah. And the reason I picked this was that I can see this being a better. Uh, I can see this. I can visual visualize this better than I can the medikit because basically the medikit. I just imagine a syringe out of a dart gun, uh, and, and and this. But this I can imagine kind of like a, a small package of nanobots or small little uh, androids or whatever just hitting whatever it is and scuttling inside and pulling wires together and kind of sacrificing themselves to kind of get the thing going again um uh, a little kind of range uh, like and little uh, spiders yeah like little spiders and you, you see on sci-fi films where the more practical side it uh levels the playing field a little bit with um structure and uh hit points if you know what i mean um, because I kind of like that bit where you've got that same mechanic as you have with um uh, fleshy um players as well as kind of mechanical players. I've got an affinity for the mechanical players, you see. I liked that they when they added Gizmo Kit, they included uh, a special physique characteristic on things like tags. Oh, yeah, yeah, it, yeah. So that it makes whilst yes, you can heal a tag with a Gizmo Kit, it's not using its usually ludicrously high physique, it has a a much more reasonable value, so there's still a risk in doing it. It was a nice addition, like brought up a nice amount of parity. The other thing they haven't done though with the engineer is there's no, you know, like there's a doctor and a paramedic, there's still no technician or or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> this is kind of, right. The one in between. But, yeah. <laughs> the training. I don't know whether they're going to, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, pass me the spanner, man. Okay, so that's my first. That's my first choice. I think it's a great addition to N4, and I'm really happy it came along this year. So it's, that was my first cool rule of this year. So who's next? I'll let Lawrence go next. That's very nice of you. Well, I'm hoping I can't. I'm trying to. Here we go. My number three was MSV Level One, which now allows you to shoot through smoke. It now doesn't feel like a handicap. Exactly. I, this for me has just opened up so many um troop types and options and things that just were never there before uh 
and as I've mentioned once or twice, as an Ariadne player, we <laughs> we have no um, level two at all. So level the the fact that there's now an option to shoot through smoke, or I mean, probably more importantly, to kind of do an ARO against somebody approaching you through smoke. Um, I think is is a is a great thing, and, and I think it's like reinvitalized, if that's a word. Um, some you know some troop types that I've never looked at before, and now I'm thinking, ooh, that could be interesting. But also on the, in the other people's armies, you're also there's lots of things that they can now use that you know to shoot through the smoke that I'm throwing, uh, you know, with the dog warriors and various other bits and pieces. So my own tactics have got to change as well, you know, with this as a consideration. No, I thought it was a good change. It made, I, I always thought that multi-spectral visor felt like a handicap like when it was at level one in, in third edition. It was, uh, you got you got um, the worst of both worlds. You got stopped by smoke and you got stopped by reflective zones and stuff as well. Yeah. So, you, yeah, you, you were com- white noise and smoke. You were shut down by both. But you're right. I think that's, I think it's an important one. What about you, Claude? Do you like it? Well, multi visor visor in uh, N3, you used to forget you had it. <laughs> yeah. No, only you used to forget you had it. Okay, I forget everything. But um, but you, you don't like smoke. You think you don't like smoke as a rule. I hate smoke. I hate smoke. And with that, should we go for the next one? Awesome. Which would Mr. Be Shroud. That be it. Uh, okay, my, so mine, which one? mine is my mine is the um, the changing to be able to move through spaces. That's my third favorite thing that they changed. Mind the gap. Good name for it. I think the ability now to move through spaces that are half the width of your base, providing you clear them, or to cover things that are half the width of your base, as long as you can land. That whole change to be able to move through smaller gaps and across smaller gaps. Again, like with um, the the change from multi supervisor, it's a little change. That makes the game a lot more playable and changes and opens up battlefields so much. I mean, there are so many pieces of like terrain that comes as a kit where there's there's gaps that you can't change the size of. All of a sudden, oh, hang on, that's a way through that building. That was never. Oh, I can do. Oh, it just makes it so much more fun to get around the battlefield on, and, and it changes the existing terrain sets so much. I think mm-hmm. it opens yeah. up the table, doesn't it? Some... It does. Um, I've definitely had games where I've come up to a junction and then realised I can't get through it, um, or a doorway that I can't fit through as well. Uh, <laughs> or, or window. So this is it we, opens up. The Claw and I did have a game where he got out a set of vernier calipers to measure the size of a window that I wanted to go through. Oh my goodness! And it was thirty-eight millimeters wide, so I couldn't go through it in M3. I can now. <laughs> <laughs> It was the oh, rule at the dear. time. It was the rule at the time. Oh, the only gamer I know who keeps a set of earlier calipers on hand, just in case. I, um, for me, I like it because you, you can go into them rooms now. You can take your, your large base through that doorway where logically you just kind of duck down a bit and kind of get in. Um, it feels nicer for me. And like uh, Storm Shadow just said, those two mil uh, issues that you get... Um, you're not going to get get that anymore. You can just get through it and go through it. Um, for me, I, I think that's a great choice, a, a good addition to this rule set. But yeah, that, that's my third choice. I think we're back around to Claw for you. Your second favourite uh, change. Okay. okay, so my second one is uh, the rule of fifteen. Okay. So the rule, the rule of fifteen, is my second rules choice. Um, I know it's. Uh, a bit of marmite but for the community i think uh some big list players kind of like feel restricted down to 15 um and they're going to struggle and all that kind of thing because they've gone to play with 20 22 23 uh orders and for me i uh i think it's brilliant because uh, i've always preferred the more interesting uh, miniatures, the more interesting characters, uh, where they are more expensive to field. So I've never really got more than 15 anyway. Um, so having that limit, for me, 
it stops me coming up against uh, a 20 or 25 order list or whatever. Uh, and all kind of all the, all, the, all the bits and pieces where th- there's just a load of cheerleaders at the back with one or maybe two things running up the middle, throwing smoke, being a total pain in the rear, uh, ramboing. And uh, for me, I, I like that restriction. It kind of gives a bit more of a level playing field for me. What are, you, what are your thoughts? I like this as well. I think I said um, last week, if we are allowed to refer to other conversations we may have had on YouTube. <laughs> Um, as an organiser of tournaments, the 15 order list is brilliant. Um, one of the big things, problems I had was people who brought big armies, 20, 20 plus orders, and just couldn't use it in a timely fashion. Um, and I spent a lot of time, most of my time was going around, you know, shouting at people to get a shift on. And, you know, people aren't going to be tactical either if I'm trying to shuffle them along and, and get a move on. So, the it's much better for as a tournament organizer i don't know you know part of my headache during the day is getting people to finish the games on time and 15 orders is fantastic um in you know in helping me do that you say i agree and i think it, it makes a nicer level play it makes life easier for, for tournament organizers the other thing i think it does it's a it's a great move by Corvus Valley because it changes the landscape. All of a sudden, you're not looking for the cheapest units. You're looking for the units that come in at around sort of 20 to 30 points if you want to get to that 15, that 15 of it. So all of a sudden, without having to do anything other than say, this is the this is the limit unless you're playing with this extra, Ariadna players so they suddenly aren't looking for 30 volunteers. They're going, oh, hang on. I can, what, what, what else can I use? Yeah. It forces you to dip back into your collection and use things you haven't used in a while. So I think it's great. Also, for me, I like the fact that we can uh, start looking at units that give extra orders uh, for one way or another, whether it's uh, the lieutenant's, an extra lieutenant's order here or there, or the um, impetuous, no, the other one. Tactical awareness. That's the fella. I'm glad you two know. Um, I knew it existed, but remember the name. Uh, but it makes you look at those uh, profiles a little bit more clo- uh, carefully and, and think, okay, if I bring him, I can start using a little bit extra. I, I can put him in a link team. It gives me that little bit extra uh, uh, focus on that link team. So I like the way they've gone with it. 15 maximum, but you can get a few extra through the back door, so to speak, if, you, if you're clever. A few extra orders. Um, yeah. Oh, there are. Oh, there's the proxies, aren't there, in uh, LF and things? They how they. They're wonderful. Weird, they're they're weird. lovely. <laughs> I, I play OSS. I, I, I'm going to defend proxies. If you two start, I'm going to go at them. They're not at all broken. I, I have an LF See, army. Straight face. <laughs> I said that with a straight face. Proof. <laughs> no, I don't like them at all. <laughs> So they are completely broken. They, they are. They are wonderful. They're, I don't. There's no reason not to take them. They're so fantastic. They give you so much value. Anyway, we're getting off topic. No one mentioned no proxies. All right. Okay. Yes. Yes. Nobody mentioned <laughs> that. Like the wall or, or something. You got away um, with it once. They already noticed. <laughs> uh, okay. So let's go for uh, Lawrence's next one. Oh, blimey! Right. Okay. Cover roll. Um, if I am correct. Um, so this obviously came in when Code One started. You know that the the new cover uh, rules, um, where in the old N three, you know it had to be a third, didn't it? A third of the silhouette was covered, um, and now it's just obscured in some way. So I think you know there, there's been all sorts of silly things about kind of tags hiding behind uh, fire hydrants and things like that, but. To me, um, it stops people arguing about silly, like little rules things. Well, oh, he's in cover. He's not, oh, he's not a third. It's not a third. Another thing as a TO that I had a problem with. Um, now it's yeah, he's in cover. No, he's not in cover. He's not. You know, he's not touching. It's dead easy. Um, I think for me, the uh, the games run smoother. Um, you know, the code one rule, uh, games and things that I've had, that there's no, there's less discussion about are they in cover or they're not in cover, you know. Yeah, he's in cover, he gets the, you know, you've got your plus three. Or... I also like the being on the building, so if you're higher, 
um, you are obscured. Um, there That's was loads, my favourite yeah. change to it. it. It makes it so much easier to... There was loads, loads of trouble, you know, with people up and are they, are they, are they not? Or where's, you know, what's, and if they'd gone prone and they were edging forward, are they in cover? Are they not? Now it's all sorted out. If you're, if you're above the target, you're in cover. And I think it just really speeds things up and really simplifies it. And I really think it's good. No, the, my favourite part, my favourite part of the car thing was definitely the, the, the elevation, the, the change to if you are on a higher elevation, you're in cover. I think the thing with tags and fire hydrants, don't take the proverbial, is the way I'm going to play it. If, I, if, I, if I'm using Maggie and she's got a little tiny cardboard box in front of her, even if my opponent wants to give me cover, I'm going to say no. No. <laughs> it's, it's ridiculous. Exactly. Um, yeah. not, in my, not in my game kind of thing, isn't it? You know, you it, it kind of, yeah. don't, we don't do If somebody wants to try and pull that off, then I don't want yeah. to play a game with them, frankly. Well, the thing is, for tournaments, like you said, they the, the rules are quite clear. It, it, this there shouldn't be any of the arguments. It, uh, are they in cover? Are they not? So even if Maggie stood behind a, a cardboard box, officially it's in cover. So as a tournament, that's what you play. When you play with your mates, you'll just go stop taking the beep. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and 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 you'll have a different type of game when you're not in a tournament. Um, and I kind of like that. The, the fact that you can hide behind a lamppost uh, in a tournament. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, fair enough. It's a tournament. That's where you are. You're hiding behind a lamppost in, the, uh, in a friendly game. You're going to go, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Take the moral high ground. Yeah, but you do get the cover on the high ground. Well, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so any more thoughts on cover? No. Nope. I think we've covered it. Ah. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's have a look at Storm's Fields next one. My second favourite change was Criticals. As someone who is on the receiving end of the clause, <laughs> sometimes silly number of Criticals in a game, the fact that I don't instantly take a wound and I actually still get a chance to save, even if I've got to make two of them, is far, far more, far preferable. And I think it, it's one of those little changes that has loads of knock-on effects. So it makes tags and heavy infantry a little bit more survivable because, okay, I've taken a crit, I've got to make two saves. I'm still in cover. I've still got eight points of armour. I've still got a pretty good chance of, of walking away from this without a scratch. It makes things like, take. I'm going to run across cover. I've got two wounds. That's fine. If he gets a crit, I'll take a wound. Now it's, oh, I've got to take two armour saves. Ugh, that's slightly riskier. It just changes the game really in subtle ways. And it's not, crits are still powerful. They still instantly win that face to face roll, but they don't instantly take a model off the table. Mm. Giving the young players that chance for me is, is, is the big thing there. Until you start playing the game and start feeling how these crits affect the game and uh, uh, against what and sometimes you get lucky sometimes you don't get lucky and that's and that's great because before it used to be one wound gone uh, now you can kind of get lucky you can take more risks with your heavier armor you can um, do slightly different things personally I don't think that Corvus Belly could have done anything better to the crit I can't no. think. I couldn't think of anything that. Oh, they should have done this. You should have done that. I. Can't, I think it was an ideal solution. And and bless you, Corvus Belly. Yeah, I think you did a good job on that one. What's your thoughts, Lawrence? I I like it a lot as well. I, it, again, uh, you know, earlier I was talking about things that have reinvigorated things, and this is it as well. You know, there's not. Um, yeah, the, the big guys are more survivable. It just makes more sense. I always. I never liked it when you know the big the guys in the big armor just got shot and they were off and disappeared, you know, and 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 it just seemed strange. You know, you could effectively shoot a tag with a pistol and and take it out. I didn't like that at all, and and I think now the armor makes makes more sense. It makes those big guys more valuable. Like you say, I I, I like it. I think it's a really good change. Um, it it's. It, yeah, you kind of, it, what I'm finding strange is I roll a crit and I go, oh, crit, and then I kind of go, oh, no, he gets a save still. <laughs> kind of, I've still got the mentality that, oh, I've got it through, oh, no, I've not caused a wound yet, hang on a minute. Um, so, you know, I think it's something I've got to get used to. 
uh, but I like, you know, so yeah, my initial reaction has to get changed. But I do like the way it works. I'm enjoying hitting uh, with a HMG or uh, Spitfire or something like that and getting a crit on there and just seeing how many saving rolls your opponents have to roll. That's yeah. a big handful of saving rolls then because the extra ones are in there. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm going to need to start buying more D20s. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's have a look at the next one. Your favourite rule change? My favourite rule change? Rule or thing? Let me do a drum roll. Hang on. Okay, with my favourite little uh, rules change for N4 in this year, it comes to the uh, martial arts change. So ra rather than picking a stat, you get uh, all the level bonuses as you, as you go up. So you don't have to pick anything. You haven't got to kind of think about what you're doing. You've got level four. That's what you've got. You've got uh, plus three attack, minus three to your opponents, plus three damage modifier. And that's what you've got. And, and you don't have to pick one. Uh, as you did in N3. And for me, being a simple kind of uh, gamer, I like simple. I'm martial arts level four. That's what I've got. Let's go. Bish, bash, bosh. And I think it's stronger in N4 as well. Uh, I don't know what, if you, what your thoughts are. But for me, that little tweak where you, you haven't got a choice, it's there, it's in that little box. Job done. So. Yeah, totally. So three is better than two. Two is better than one. That it didn't used to be like that, did it? It was like, right, hang on a minute, you're using three. If I maybe use this one instead of this one, it's much better. Absolutely agree. Completely, much, much clearer. Yeah, it, it makes sense that the higher levels are better. There's no, there's, there's yeah, it, it was always a weird chart in M3, it, the N4 version, although I was still struggling to remember exactly what you get at each level, is definitely better. I will never remember what you get at each level. I will always have to look. I'm not uh, a, a, a part of the matrix like you are, Storm Shroud. Um, I, uh, from, but for me, you haven't got to make a choice. Personally, I think it's stronger in N4. I don't know what you two think about uh, close combat in N4, but I personally think so. But it could just be a personal thing on the games I've played so far. Sphinx. Um. <laughs> let it go. Just, just let it go. No. <laughs> it's fine um, I think it is stronger however um, uh, well I think it's stronger because it's more simple and you kind of like you you, you end up like the chance of critting is higher because you kind of you t you, your numbers are higher and also your your like your physical goes up more doesn't it so you, your chances of damaging are higher what's um, I've not kind of worked out yet is the, the burst extra burst used to be on level four and it isn't anymore no, it's um, level five. and i haven't quite worked out so i had well more rats you know the data rats i had burst two because they had uh, martial arts four and they've it's now changed and they haven't so i haven't quite worked out whether having a higher chance of actually hitting and the, you know is actually better than having burst two um, I mean, it's quite a niche, a niche thing, I think, because there aren't that many who had burst two anyway. But uh, again, again, that was a thing about which level is better than which other level, um, you know, which I think, you know, again, as we said, is much clearer. I'm sure somebody's run the numbers, but yeah, I, I, my gut says that having the higher burst will probably give you a better chance of success because more dice is more better. Um, more better, but, uh, yeah, more better for her, especially with my dice look. But I, for me, it's the physique makes it is what makes it feel more deadly. Yeah. All of a sudden, you're hitting it with a more with, with the data as you're hitting a physique seventeen. And that's a big difference from fourteen. Yeah. Especially now, the armor is more important because yeah. of the way the crit roll has changed. You know, yeah. they they go together very nicely. They do. Okay, so shall we go on to the next one? Yeah. yeah. Is, it, is it me? It is you. I was going to give myself a drum roll. I'm going to give myself a drum roll here before I tell you my favourite. <laughs> the impetuous rule. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, the impetuous rule and the changes to that. Now, impetuous is something that a lot of people were scared of. Um, I used quite a lot of it. Again, I used, you know, dog warriors, uh, Ermandinos. 
quite a lot. Um, and basically, you had to work out how not to run out in front of the everybody else's big guns. Uh, but now they've changed it that there's no more... Well, the impetuous is a choice, basically. So there was extreme impetuous, wasn't there, before, where basically you had to do it unless you spent an order to stop yourself. Now that's gone. So you can choose to do it or not do it. So that kind of expenditure of those orders to try and keep your troops alive is, is no longer... Well, exactly, is no longer um, a problem. It's, it's, a, it's a bigger choice. It makes them much more useful. I think what's quite weird is I've noticed a lot of them have gone... Of people, uh, troops that were impetuous have gone down in cost. However, I think they've, they, they've become much, much more useful and much more deadly because they're no longer running out in front of people. They, they have to go their full move, but they, they just have to be nearer the, um, the deployment zone of the other person. It's not like you have to run straight towards the nearest person that's, uh, that's on the table. So much better, makes those troops so much better. Excuse me, the impetuous discount has always been ludicrous. Um, I, and I do, I am going to miss saying extremely impetuous, but yeah, I, the not having to spend an order to cancel stuff, just being able to choose to use it or not is great. The only thing in this rule, and I'm, I'm at risk here of having my face replaced by a Grinch, um, is what happens when you reach the enemy's deployment zone? There's no one near you. I, I don't know. Nobody's Touchdown! Really, uh, like, no. Yeah, exactly. Is it, do, do, does my Datarazi get a crown? Is he now a super Datarazi? What happens? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. That is, I have not seen a good explanation of that yet, uh, I must admit. Um, I, to be honest, the number of times I've actually managed to get to the, uh, the other person's deployment zone alive is oh, very, very much. Twice in four already. Oh, you know, no. <laughs> <laughs> Oh dear. Um, what occurred to me as well, um, the uh, Duroc um, is impetuous and he can start in the deployment zone. What does so he do? Yeah, if there's no one near him, what does he do? Yeah, he just runs around <laughs> in circles. <laughs> Chases his tail. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not sure. But I, I, the, the getting across the board bit is, uh, is, <laughs> is brilliant. The general changes to the rule, I think, are great, and they they make it nice and clear. The ta the table of what you're allowed to do is straight in there. There's there's no quibbling. It, yeah, great. Just a little change, but makes it a lot better. So my first choice is Code One as a concept, because I've been playing since first edition, so I understand Code One is not aimed at me. I think Code One is mainly aimed at your friendly local game stores. It's now so much easier for them to know what they need to stock on their shelves to get people into Infinity. They stock the stuff in the black boxes, the Code 1 stuff. That's people's entry point into the game. And that can only be a good thing. The more people we get playing the game, the more people we will have to play against, the more people we get coming to tournaments. I think Code 1 as a concept, whilst it's not aimed at me specifically, because I, yeah, I've been playing for so long now, I don't really have a desire to play a simple version. But if it gets more people into the game... And it gets more stores stuck in the game, and it gets the, it gets Infinity and Culture Rally more space on the shelves, which is at a premium in small gaming stores. Then fantastic, and that was a great decision, but not dumbed down to the point that it's unrecognisable. That was what, that was one of my concerns when they announced they were doing it. Was oh no, what are they doing? <laughs> but it's still it still feels like Infinity for the most part. You still get games that come down to the last dice roll. Um, and, and I think everything in there is still valid, isn't it? I'm not sure. I don't think there's any rules in there that are not the that, same in the no, main there's rules. There's just things that are missing rather than things that are... Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Templates. 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 Yeah. yeah. The, the, Combined not, orders. Yeah. They're all things that are missing <laughs> that you then learn when you move on to, to N4. Yeah. yeah I, I, I think... I, yeah. Sorry. I, I think it's great. And if you go back in our videos, you'll see uh, myself playing my son, uh, going through all the Cold Storm missions. And he's never played Infinity before. He picked up Code 1 really easy. And uh, he's not gone to college. There's a reason for it. But he picked it up. Um, he picked up that, that rule set. He understood. He beat me, obviously. Um, <laughs> <laughs> As happens but, on camera. Yeah. Um, um, but yeah, he picked the code one rules up 
really easy, got the concept, because the concept of AROs, the concept of uh, two uh, aspects to each uh, order, all those kind of things you don't generally get in other games. So this uh, Code 1 helps you kind of get those little concepts for Infinity going forward, which you don't get in other games. And it kind of gives you an idea of what the game's all about as well, kind of like go forward. Should we move on to talking about the shiny new models from 2020 that we all love? Yes. Okay. Let's do a whip roll. Oh, Another one? Uh, I got a 20. <laughs> oh, I got a 9. I got a 10. Does that mean oh. I have to go first? Yeah. Yes. You go oh, first no. this time. <laughs> so I decided I was going to celebrate the little guys, the, 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 the cheerleader models, the, the silhouette. All my chick picks a silhouette too. I wanted to pick models that aren't big and flashy that I just think are so packed with character and such lovely little sculpts that they deserve someone to, to cheer for them. And my first pick is going to be this, this Zanshi from Operation Cows from the One, the female model pulling her hood up against some sort of snowstorm or snow flurry or something. I just think there's so much character packed into what is essentially just a cheap little cheerleader model that it was one of my favourite models from the entire box. Uh, and it's a, a gorgeous I think the paint job on it was stunning as well she really looks like she's trying to fend off it's a, it's a snow flurry for me yeah to protect her you know perfect complexion yeah I just I thought it was a, a an understated sculpt it is. Uh, I like it, it a lot I, I do I've, I've painted it as, as you can see on screen now you can see my, my paint job that's blurry because don't, you don't want to zoom in too close um but it was a it was lovely to paint and i did like the uh kind of like coat over the head and it, it is for a, for a cheerleader model that's 12 points something like that in the, in the code one box is one <laughs> okay for, for one point in the code one box and out of that whole code code one box there's some lovely lovely models but um that one is a really nice one and <laughs> but I know I, I I think it's a great model. You're right. The I think though you tend to you paint your cheerleaders and they tend to go on the board a lot. They do. They're oh, always they. on the board. So well, they are know, for me. To have something like that, I think that's really that's really good. So that that's my that's my it's, third choice. Right. So let's go for uh, Lawrence's next one. Ah. So my third place model of the year, uh, which is a title I've just made up. Um, is the Spec Ops model that came in the Nox SWC pack. So there was uh, a hacker, HMG, sniper, and also the Spec Ops model. Uh, and I think this is amazing. It's like my the favourite new Shazvasti model of the lot. It's like all the best things that they redid with all the Shazvasti, all put into one model. So the face is there, the hood's there, the new armor's there. Just great, absolutely like really, really like this model. It's a lovely, menacing pose as well. It is, and you can use it a lot as well. You know, I've used it for all sorts of different. It could uh, be a shrouded. Shrouded. It could be a malignus. It could be anything. Exactly. It's a. It's a. It's a vasty with a hood, a bit of a gun, and a knife that's soon going to be, you know, entering your body, probably in in a painful. It, it, it's with all the armor and all that kind of like um, cording underneath that cording skin type thing that they've got. Um, uh, yeah, it's lovely. Got the tactical rock. What more do you want? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the only downside is, is it's going to spend half the game as a camo token, so you're never going to see it. Well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so who have we not had yet? Ah, moving swiftly me. onwards. Claw, what was your third choice? Okay, my third. Sh um, choice is the uh shazvasti battle pack now in the battle oh, pack you've got all uh, of them all of them okay. um the thing is they're all gorgeous i know some of the models weren't actually all in 2020 in fact all of them um but the thing is they put the, together the battle packs and it kind of goes with the code one thing um and it kind of goes with the we, we all need a new army thing where you can just buy a box uh, of Shazvasti and it's the start of your army and then you start looking around for the extra bits and um, a few more knocks and all, all the 
uh, kind of like first thought of what should I get? So you just get one of these battle packs and away you go. You build them all. There's your first army. Away you go. You, you've got everything you need. You've got a few cheerleaders, a few kind of heavier uh, armoured, uh, a few tricks and things in there, some lovely little she skins and things. That's so much nicer than the old sculpt. And the fact that they're all nicer than the old sculpts, it's just, oh, for me, it's great. I like the Shazvasti. I like the new Shazvasti models. I like you can get them all in a battle pack. With all the battle packs, if you want to start a new army, just pick up one of these boxes and you've got is a it, new army. Is it, <laughs> is it battle pack or action pack? Or are the new ones? Uh, I think it's called an action pack. Action pack. Combine that action pack. Ah, there you a go. Of it. There's a picture of it on but, screen now. But you're right, pack. though. They are very, very nice. Um, they, <laughs> ah, this model here, which I can never remember what that is. That's the shrouded. What, is, it, is it? Right, okay, thanks. That's the shrouded. That he's putting his fingers up as well to the opposition. I think that's a little bit rude. That, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but it's nice, the, you know. A bit like I was saying about my choice, the cloak, the the new armor, the, just very very nicely done. The rescopes of the Shazvasti have been great. I mean, it wasn't a high bar that they had to clear from the old ones, but they are so much nicer. Yeah, I, and we've still got a load more to look forward to with uh, Defiance. Oh yeah, and that comes out. Yeah, yeah. I must admit, I, I found it strange when the Shazvasti came out. I was kind of thinking, oh, what are they going to do? What are they going to do? You know, and then they came out and I went, well, yeah, that's what, that's what they do. That's obviously like. what they're going to do, yeah. That's obviously what they look like. You know, and I, it was it was almost like there was no, I had no surprise. It was just like, yeah, that's it. That's what they look like. And, you know, which I think is is brilliant. You know, they've just come out with this. Yep, there you go. She's last day of this. And it just made total sense to me that that's what I, I, they look like. I'm just going to sort of emphasize what you said there in, in, in your little talk. Because I'm sure someone might point out the comments. Actually, they came out in 2019. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but the battle pack didn't. That's the thing. It's the whole battle pack as well that I like. Uh, whether it's Shazvasti or uh, O12 or anything, the, the, uh, those boxes of an army, you can go in, pick up, and think, oh, actually, I want, I, 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 I'm going to start an army. I will start. 012, you go in and you buy that 012 box. Mm -hmm. It and is a nice evolution go. from the starter boxes, these action packs. They're, they're basically 10 models in a box, close to 300 points, get you started, bing, off you go. Absolutely. Funnily enough, yesterday I was talking to somebody on Facebook and they said, oh, I'm interested in starting Combined Army. What should I do first? And I, I immediately thought, aha, action pack. Because <laughs> uh, it's just the way to do it, isn't it? Um, absolutely is. Yeah, and the thing is, you can add one model and it'll change it, and then you add another model, completely different army. Uh, and, and that's one of my big, th my big loves of Infinity, where you can add a model and it totally changes the d dynamic of your army. And these packs as well, it's a proper army where you know the starter boxes were just six models, weren't they? Mm -hmm. And now this is it's at ten models, and it's you know. Can do some damage yeah and you, you can take you, you may not finish at the top but you can easily take the 10 models in that action pack to a, to your first tournament and yeah. it won't be a bad list you're taking yeah absolutely i mean you'd probably still beat me with it <laughs> <laughs> next one are we on choice two now choice, choice two, two for two. me i believe yeah ah so my second choice is the prospector from the uh, Diaphos Void Tango, I think it was called, box that came out. Hey, I got it right. Um, it's, it's strange. The, the civilian model, the HVT model in the box is the one that makes me go, oh, I want that box. I mean, mm. the, the Shazvasti guy, the tunnel crumbler bloke, that's great. He's a fantastic sculpt. Love him. Casanova, you can... Him off, I, I, he didn't do anything for me, but that prospector again, so much attitude in a simple little sculpt. And it's just, yeah. it's not even part of your army, it's effectively an objective model. It and it's got so much character packed into it, so many little details like the the um, the suit, the mining suit with the arms tied together around the waist. It's, I, yeah, love it. I mean, I can't think of any other company that puts that amount of effort and detail 
into an objective model. I agree. It's nice. It's, it's it is nice. I do like it. I nearly bought the pack just for that, just for that model. To be honest, I did. Oh, did you? <laughs> <laughs> but it is. It is. Yeah. Because I mean, I've got a growing collection of these little HVTs, I don't know, as I think we probably all have. Um, but yeah, it is a really, really nice one, isn't it? I really, you know, it's it's lovely. We can just put the. As I was just saying, the Justin Timberlake models to one side, or the James. Uh, no, yeah, he, he didn't do anything for me at the Casanova school. They, they didn't seem to go with the other two to me. I, the render was better on him. The render looks better than the, the model. Mm. There's, there's something on the model that once you see it, you can't unsee. And unfortunately, somebody pointed out to me. Oh, it, it, is it too rude to point out on this? It's not too rude, but if you look mm -hmm. at the model's crotch. His fly is thicker than his sword. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, an interesting detail. <laughs> Why? Anyway, move on quickly. Move on. We're moving off the good stuff. You're going to turn me into the greens. The prospect is no. gorgeous. He's got attitude. Fantastic. There we go. Phew. We managed to do it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So next one. So my second choice for best model of the year is the Knight of Justice from the Colstrom box. Oh, look at that. Oh, look at that. Yeah. Look at that. It was... When Colstrom come out, you know, they do their... You know, Corvus now do their own preview weeks and things, don't they? And, you know, Carlos does his little chat. And I'm thinking, oh, do you want Pano? Oh, Eugene? Not my, it's not my thing. I don't want that. And then this model came on, and I was like... Okay, I'm getting that. Um, so I bought the entire box for the one model. I just think it's brilliant. <laughs> the, the pose, the pose is amazing. You know, amazing. It's it's just all there. It's all action. You know, you know what's going to happen with it. It's a it, in the game. It's a combat monster. You know, it's 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 just all there. It's brilliant. Flowing, you know, flowing cloaks, big sword, bit of attitude, and and that big base to make it stand out. It's just I really really like it. Uh, for me, it, it's it, this was my favourite model out of uh, Colstrom, and it's why I've kind of started a Pano army um, uh, because of this model. It's the double cloaks, uh, double cloak. Well, kind of skirt, half skirt, cloak at the bottom, so it's like a double cloak. So you can have two different colours. I've got a white one and a, a red one underneath. Um, the only thing I did do with this model was to get rid of that big hunk of metal at the bottom and replace it uh, replace it with the base so I, right. I remove the strange bit of metal underneath and put yeah. it directly onto the base as you can see I put uh, it looks like a, she's done on a big chunk of ice now rather than that weird thing a bigger chunk but, of ice a bigger chunk of ice but for me it encouraged me to go out and do the rest of the pano army um, and start buying extra stuff for the pano because I just love that model. And if, if it was on one of those scales, it would be, yes, I bought an extra army because of that model. So yeah. if you hadn't have picked it, this would have been in my top three as well, mate. All right. Oh, that's good. Somebody agrees with you. Uh, but <laughs> I think, I, it's absolutely right. <laughs> and, it, and it's like one of my things about writing lists, um, which is another topic we'll, I'm sure, come to another time. Um, but it's like I put in the models I like. And this is like when I do a panel list, Okay, now justice first thing in. Okay, now what else am I going to try to do as well with, with Spitfire? Yeah, <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> Why leave home with anything less? Run up into the into the two foot range and start shoot. <laughs> exactly. Let loose. Yep. Are, are you quiet so you don't not going to be a Grinch? Or? I do. I feel like he's trying not to say something. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's a, it's a lovely model. It's a horrible profile to fight against. It's a, it, is a, it is a nice one. I've never been able to get past the fact that it looks like it's swinging a baseball bat. It looks like it's lined up to receive a pitch in baseball to me. It always has done. <laughs> <laughs> you don't wear cloaks in baseball. And you don't swing a two-handed sword like that. <laughs> but anyway, anyway, I'm, I'm the Grinch now. It's, it's too late. So anyway, I, it's a great profile. The model, personally, I may feel differently when I assemble and paint it. It may be a joy to paint. 
I'm not yeah. so full of that I have to face it every bleeding time he plays his banner. <laughs> because it's one of those cool models that you have to, you, you kind of like think, well, what my army, I want all the cool stuff. So she's in it. <laughs> and he's, you're right. I, I, it's, as Lawrence says, it's one of those things. That it's a cool model. You put it in. And the profile's cool as well. Heavily armoured. Which helps. Killer. Yeah. Heavily armoured killer within two foot. Yeah. Stick her in the middle. Done. <laughs> There's a forward deployment one as well, isn't there? Yeah. Okay, so let's go into the next one. It is me. My second uh, choice is Kodali. Uh, Kodali and sneaking in betrayal. Ooh, um, I, I, well, yeah. Well, it, it's it, it's one. So there's there's two versions of Kodali. There's the one that came with the betrayal. Uh, betrayal. Love Betrayal, really good book. Kind of, for me, it goes a bit weird in the middle because you couldn't really follow it quite well, but it might be a Spanish kind of translation thing. But uh, really enjoy Betrayal. If you haven't read it, get it, read it. It's great. The model that came with that, fantastic. Um, I painted her up before uh, other models that I really needed to paint because I wanted to paint her. Um, and... Oh, she's just gorgeous. Uh, even uh, and the one that comes in the uh, Diapho box, um, slightly different uh, posting, but just I think she's great. Exactly. Uh, I love the do back. that noise. Do that noise again. <laughs> it's just oh. ah. <laughs> uh, viewers, I think we might have to give Claw a moment. Sounds, sounds like needs a personal time. <laughs> okay. I'm I'm back on screen now. I've got to have my hand. I've got to have my hand. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. I, this model, I can't field it in any uh, of my armies, but I painted her up because I thought yeah. she was so nice. Um, and it's just one of those models where you, you, if you're lucky enough to get her with um, betrayal or get her in the coat, it's just yeah. She's one of those mm, models for me. Given that you mentioned it, I thought Betrayal was fantastic. I really loved the story in Betrayal. I thought it was a it was a, it was a nice uh, a nice addition to the the mangas. I know it's not technically a manga that they've been doing. Um, yeah, I, I I I enjoyed the whole experience of Betrayal, the the book and the model. Yeah, um, I, I was a uh, more of an outrage fan, but both books. Um, if you ever get a chance to read both books, you. That sees the opportunity they're really good and it gives you a little bit of kind of uh idea of what the kind of universe that infinity is based in as well so my first choice is still silhouette two but it is definitely it's definitely more of a feature piece um it is strangely enough yeah another shaz vasti it's it's got to be yeah the, the noctifer from the uh code one alpha booster whatever they call it i the, the pose is just so menacing. It's got that nod. There you go, booster pack alpha. It's got the nod to the previous missile launcher scope. Still available in 2020. That was the rule. <laughs> um, I, the pose is just so menacing. And like I said, the nod to the classic missile launcher pose. I I need to get this twice. I need to once use it on the table and once to do a diorama of it. Just perched above somebody waiting to deliver death and destruction. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Nice, isn't it? Absolutely. Uh, part, yeah, more Shazvasti models. There's definitely a theme there, isn't there, with, with us? We, we apparently all like great. the way they reached the Shazvasti, yeah. This is a great model, isn't it? He'd like to say, it just, it just oozes sort of death, doesn't it? And kind of like... Menace. It, it, it's sort of, menace. I think the menace yeah. is, for me. If you looked under the uh, description of menace in the dictionary, that's the picture you see. I thought you were going to say Dennis. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know what you're talking about. Way before my oh, time, no, that okay. mate. Oh no, <laughs> we've established this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, it's kind of. It reminds me slightly of a Batman thing, you know, like uh, something from a, you know, kind of the Dark Knight on the top of a skyscraper looking down and you know look at his next victim or, well, it, or whatever it wouldn't look out of place on the cover of a batman comic certainly yeah just looks brilliant it, it shows um the quality of the sculpting 
Um, okay, it's digital sculpting, but they have got it down to a T. They really have got that positioning, that feel, that atmosphere. That a, a miniature giving you a sense of atmosphere doesn't. You, you don't get that with many models. Uh, models, and so yeah, I think that's a good choice, Storm Trout. Uh, well deserving, and yet another shares first day. And I think it's probably because we've seen the old sculpts that we are gushing over the new ones. Well, I've dropped plenty of hints, so Santa better bring me that pack. <laughs> <laughs> did you did you post your list to him in plenty of time? I, I may have texted it to him. I, I, I may have discorded the the link t to my significant other. So Mrs. Stormtrad can't say that there weren't plenty of hints dropped, but I like that model. Oh, good. Uh, I may have, I may have even ordered uh, ordered <laughs> ordered the battle packs and things for Shazvasti uh, for him to deliver on Christmas. That's, that's how far I went <laughs> to make sure. Excellent. He, you know, he does need a helping hand sometimes, doesn't he, Santa? Just to make sure. Just to make sure they get the right one. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Right. Is it my turn so, now? Yeah. My number one choice isn't a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> Not after the last time you oh, spoke to us. Go. Exactly. I've just <laughs> kind of like, I felt last time we discussed this model, I could hardly talk about it. I was so excited. And now it's nearly here, another week, and it'll be, uh, with, oh, look at that. So that's, you know, the original artwork. Um, and like I think Som tried to point out last time, there is a caress to the face. But other than that, They've just captured that completely in this model. Um, and it's just brilliant. Um, Dog Warriors have always been one of my favourites. Uh, you know, one of the reasons I play Ariadna, um, and this is like the best one that, that they've come out with so far. It's just, I just love it. The two, um, you know, the two guns, the pose, the kind of the snarl, just love it. Um and even even Margot was good as well, but it's really just that Durok model is is my model of the year. Absolutely fantastic box. I, yeah, this I will be picking it up at some point. And my comment of them not putting the caress on the face was just that was the only detail that wasn't there. It wasn't a criticism that would, it wouldn't have made it unplay it would have made it unplayable if they'd done that. But how they've basically just taken that picture. And then seem to have fed it into a 3D render and go, there you go. How they've done it. I mean, all credit to the sculptors. It's absolutely Amazing. superb. Claw, you're very quiet this time. Are you, are you Mr. Grouchy? <laughs> no, it, it's okay. Um, it's okay. Uh, yeah, so, no, sorry. I'm, 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 I've, I've got to say what, my, what I think. I've got to say what I think. Uh, basically, he's missed leg day in the, in the gym, definitely. Um, <laughs> He's all shoulders um, and, and no legs uh, for me. No, I know, I know, I know. It's just, I don't know. Yes, he, he, they took the picture and, and like you said, they, they, they fed it to the kind of magic gremlins it was, it, it, and it's appeared. Um, the picture kind of had little legs, unfortunately. Um, <laughs> this, but that's, that's just me. Um, it, as far as dog warriors go, um, it really is nice, and I look forward to playing against it. And it really is, again, shows the quality of their sculpts. Yeah. I, I, differ, I disagree with you there. I'm not looking forward to playing against him at all. <laughs> no, exactly. I'm looking <laughs> I'm forward to putting a little hole in, you know, in the army. But, uh, <laughs> I'm going to groan face. when he appears on the table still. Yeah, exactly. Shame he can't take two. Yeah. Rounded the year off nicely, I think, and put a big smile on my face that that's coming out. Okay, and my final choice, the Sphinx. <laughs> uh, I've got the old Sphinx. I loved that model. Uh, I love the way it looked. I love the way it felt. Uh, uh, felt, and they've just done better. Um, they brought out the new Sphinx, and I think it's phenomenal. It, you, you Sphinx, it's brilliant, Steve. I Sphinx, it's oh. brilliant. Um, yes, uh, that, yeah, that, that was pretty terrible. Um, yeah, it looks alien. It looks big. It looks alien. And it's got glowy things on the back and a massive great sword and a big gun. And uh, yeah, I've got the old one. 
and I love the old one. I love the way the old one looked and felt, felt and um, played. Uh, tag, a T.O. tag. <laughs> What's not to love a T.O. A T.O. tag, which, again, is a mouth. It's, it's like a tongue twister on itself. It is, that is a lovely model. It really is. Have you have you actually got one in your little hand yet? Yes. Ah. Yes, I, I I have one, yes. I, I believe after our last conversation, he went a little overboard with his tag spending spree oh, and yes. bought pretty oh, much yes. all of them. Oh, yes. yes. I, I got them all apart from the 80s one with big shoulder pads. <laughs> <laughs> you got them. Okay, you bought the tags that came out for all the factions you play, so three of them. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I love this sculpt. I think it's fantastic. Uh, it's I, when they did the the dossier, the the artwork. I was a little concerned because it looked really weird and skinny, very alien. But I was wasn't sure how they were going to convert that artwork into a model. But what they've gone for is great. It's that same hunch menace that we've been talking about with so many of the shows last year. It follows through onto onto the tag as well. Yeah, he's got that forty mil um, to token that's going to come on and then you're going to swap it for that model and you're just going to want to reveal it just to put that model on the table that's just boo yeah it's going to be great <laughs> it's nice it's it's a sight it's like we were saying it's they've got that menace hasn't it on the table as well i was mentioning again you know like last week about the you, you kind of know what you need to do with it don't you you need to menace somebody with it you need to go and kill things with it and it's kind of like the model inspires your play, and I think this is definitely one of those, and and would, you know, inspire some a bit of terror in your opponent as well. I would have thought seeing that come across the, but or not seeing it come across the board at you, I guess. But, it, but just, I'm just, sure just the big so left on your army tray. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Even if it's not in your list, you just pop it there anyway. Exactly, just subtly, just leave it. Watch them try and do mental math going. <laughs> he, can't, he can't have a sphinx as well <laughs> okay so uh, that's our three rules picks and it's three models picks don't forget um, put your um, choices down in the comments below it's what you think are the best uh, three things, three rules uh, three models from this uh, year uh, we can have a start a conversation in the chat below and uh, we can see what you think so any comments, drop them in below and we'll kind of get back and we'll have a chat about it on the comments. Yeah, let's end 2020 on a positive note. Let's think, talk about the good things that Corvus Belly has, has released this year. So end on a high. Okay, so they are our choices. Um, thank you for watching this far and um, listening to his waffle on. I hope you've been painting or doing something constructive over the Christmas period. And uh, from me, thank you. And let's look forward to throwing some dice very soon. Storm Shred? Yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Have a great Christmas. Have a great New Year. And hopefully we'll all be rolling dice together in uh, 2021. And um, take care. I'll catch you in the next one. And Lawrence, you get the last. You get the last word. Do you? The judge. The judge gets the last word. Well, I've been really enjoyed being part of these uh, last two videos. So thanks to you guys. Um, uh, for me, watching you two guys has been a good part of my year as well, and I've really enjoyed it. So thank you to you two for what you two have been doing as well. You've been keeping me sane, making me giggle as well. Um, and I'm really, I've really, really appreciated it. So thank you very much to you two. To everybody right. else, let's hope next year is a little better and we can start playing games again together, as we as we always had. Have a have a great new year, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please give us a like. And if you want to see more, hit the subscribe button. It all helps to keep us motivated and raises the profile of our channel and Infinity the Game, bringing it to a wider audience. And don't forget, if you're so inclined, you can also find us on Instagram and Facebook. Thank you.